into the cipher. Prepare for another all night. On the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. All right, all right. So, um, I mean, he said something very key that I really want Bears fans, all these Cutler haters that just hate Cutler because he doesn't smile or because he's not a nice guy or because he didn't sign your little kid's hat or something when you saw him out at Gibson's or whatever a restaurant you might have seen him out at. McCown is one third of the quarterback of Jay Cutler. I just know y'all. I hope you were listening, people. Let, let, all of you, people all over the world, all of you. You're right about that because people were like, "Put in McCown." Now, even though, let me just say this: I wouldn't have had a, an issue if they would have decided to go with McCowan in this game. I feel that he has the ability to score, to run the offense, and actually be a little bit better than what I would say is a game manager. I mean, look at this way. The Bears are probably in the best position in a quarter, in a backup quarterback situation if you look around the league and all the teams that had to rotate through their backup quarterbacks. The Bears are clearly in a better position than most teams. Mm -hmm. But McCowan is actually, you know, he, he's familiar with this, with this offense. Obviously, they brought him back because – he, um, matter of fact, right now, Green Bay is looking to go get Matt Flynn and bring him back because mm -hmm. they feel like he understands that offensive scheme. So if nothing else, you're right. I want to say he's a little bit better than a third of Cutler. But, I want to give him a little bit more credit than that. But if you think that. about it, what is he, 34? I, what has he done? 35. I, I, what has he done in the NFL? But ask yourself this question. Point. He's never been technically a real starter. Yeah. And this is what I like about him. You have this guy that when he's asked to step into the starting quarterback role, he does a good job. So I'm going to give him at least half of being prepared, not getting all the first reps. Like, obviously, that Green Bay game, he got all the first reps in practice that week to prepare for that game. Mm -hmm. And I think he would have performed just as well in this game against Detroit. I honestly feel that way even if Cutler wasn't ready to go. I questioned from the very beginning, was Cutler ready to go? This could be an ankle injury. What I noticed coming into the second quarter is that the mechanics were off. He wasn't planning the back foot. The throws were kind of lofting up, which turned into a lot of the throws being a little too short and not being accurate. I thought, honestly, that they may pull him coming out of halftime because he didn't seem like he was insane. Had a great first half. 12 of 18. I mean, he didn't do bad, but you could tell he was kind of struggling through some of his passes. He were. But it was funny because I was watching the games with people, and they were like, take him out. Put him a cow. And I'm like, okay, he's not, he's not doing bad. The first, the first series looked phenomenal with him coming out the gates. He didn't look like there were any mobility issues, and he was planting the back foot. His mechanics are good. I noticed going in towards the end of the second quarter, the mechanics looked a bit rusty on him. And I, I don't know if it's because it was the ankle. That might have been why he wasn't planting properly, or it could have been the groin. Who knows? I think they might have been better served letting him sit out this week, and I don't think I would have had an issue with that whatsoever. What do you think out there? 773-591-1690. We're taking your Bears calls. We're actually going to carry our Bears segment over until the next one. We'll have our guest John Ruffin on at 10 o'clock. Um, I think 773-591-1690. I think that Matt Forte and the running game are getting a major pass today. Wait. That was the number one culprit in all of this Hold today up. because – if a running game can help an injured, struggling, whatever type of quarterback out in that situation, when you get 33 yards from Matt Forte, you, and then it's not even the yards, it's just the fact that he showed very little fight, very little fight in trying to get out of tackles. He was going down very easy today. Let me just say this. Very easy. Matt Forte has gotten a pass for the duration of the time that he's been with the Bears. Let's just be honest. Remember last year we talked about this and we ranked the top yeah. running backs in the league and he really didn't crack the top ten when it comes to being a pure rusher. He gets credit when he was under the Lovey Smith regime because he was rushing as well as he had passing yards. Because he had to. So he, he was kind of doing a dual role and was heavy on both sides. But when it comes to him being a pure rusher, by no means – is Matt Forte top of the class. And I, you, you saw it today, but you'll continue to see that on a defense that has a good run defense to go with that. You're going to see that continually. He will If he's not out in the flats, he is not going to bust through an A or B gap to save his life. But, today, but today, even when he was Any in open day. space, he was, getting, he was getting tackled easily. That was my thing. I, I guess my issue really isn't the yards. It's the fact that he was going down without a fight. But that's but that's classic for it. That's my point. He is not he a, always I, I love when people say this. He's not a downhill runner. By the way, the field is straight level the entire time. <laughs> so when people say not an uphill or downhill runner, I get a, I get a laugh out of that. Uh -huh. But he's not a downhill runner, as people like to say. He doesn't have the ability to rush and carry people him like what you see with even like, let's say, Reggie Bush looks like he's been resurrected from the dead, how he looks with Detroit how he's able to bust through the A or B gap and, and get those, you know, five or seven yards per carry. That's a big deal. That's never been more Matt Forte. So why people didn't notice until now, I don't know. I mean, he's having a good year. 
what, sixth in the league in rushing. He's doing stuff, but to, it just seemed like today he was going down. It, it didn't seem, it didn't look right. I'm not saying he's hurt anything, but he was going down very easily today. It wasn't taking much for the Lions to get him on the ground. That's, but honestly, that's typical Matt Forte. And for some reason, there's no desire to explore the Michael Bush as getting well, more touches. Why that is, I have no idea. Because clearly he is a more lower to the center, center of gravity type runner than Matt Forte is. Well, how'd that work on fourth and one today? <laughs> but, but here's my thing. But, 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 but my point, though, but if you don't really get any touches and I just throw you in at fourth and one, I'm not saying you shouldn't get it, but if you're barely getting any touches, you have absolutely no type of synchronicity set up whatsoever in the running game because you're not getting the touches.